And my role is to be the agency representative for PG&E to the emergency response community. So if you belong to a community emergency response team or are part of a Firewise community in your neighborhood, um, I work with you directly and with your coordinators um, so that you have someone that you can specifically connect with at PG&E who has a background in emergency response. Uh, I'm a Santa Clara Valley native. I was actually born at Stanford Hospital way back in 1960, so you can do the math on that. And I was raised in Cupertino because if you can believe it, at one time, Cupertino was like the Hollister of the peninsula where my dad worked in electronics with his peers like um, uh, Hewlett and Packard when they had the place in the garage in Palo Alto. And my dad was in the early phases of telecommunications before it really went digital. And so that's my contact information. So if you want to do like this gentleman, take a picture of that. I'll also have it at the end as well. And then I also will have business cards at the booth that I have at my table. So this morning's discussion is to... Um, talk with you and hopefully answer questions about what's PG&E doing in terms of wildfire preparedness. And I, I get the privilege and the pleasure of kicking off um, Los Altos Hills County Fire Department's first, and we hope it's an annual wildfire preparedness fair. Um, kind of an interesting time because we have um, this privilege within the next 48 hours to be receiving our first appreciable rainfall. And uh, we could see as much as four to six inches in some of the higher elevations on the Santa Cruz Mountains between the Pacific Ocean and Los Altos Hills. So it's our custom in PG&E to always start a meeting with a safety tip because everything is about us being safe uh, and being safe in our surroundings. And definitely for me, um, as your representative of PG&E is ensuring that you're safe as a customer. So you notice there's at least uh, two ways out on that side and another two emergency exits here. If we have to leave, you'll notice that at each door per the fire code, there's a fire alarm to pull. If you notice smoke or fire, that will initiate a response by your very capable fire department. If it starts to shake, what we want to do is make sure that we drop cover and hold on, put our hands over the back of our necks, getting in between the chairs, even under the chairs. Uh, in this room, it's going to be incredibly um, safe in here because of the building construction. Uh, our greatest risk is just the breaking glass. So covering up your face and eyes in the event of there being an earthquake. And of course, in addition to pulling an alarm, is to also notify emergency services using 911. So wildfire risk across uh, PG&E's service territory, and specifically in Santa Clara County, you'll notice that uh, where the town of Los Altos is, and specifically Los Altos Hills, that some of it is really close to um, our high fire threat district. And in Santa Clara County total, there's about 640,000 plus PG&E customers. That's of the 2 million people. And when you think about that, think of a customer as a place where there's a meter where it's billed. So obviously there's a significant greater number of humans that are serviced by PG&E. Uh, our total line miles of distribution lines, so that's the power line that comes to your house is about 3,000 miles, it's 2,897 miles of distribution lines. And in Santa Clara County of that, we have 585 miles in high fire threat districts. So if you have the privilege of living up in some of those beautiful locations up in the hills where it is a high fire threat district, you might have noticed that the reliability on your power lines this year was um, reduced after July 28th from what our engineering section and the wildfire risk group determined 
that we could increase the sensitivity on those power lines, radically reducing the risk of an ignition potential um, in the event of a fault on those lines. We also have transmission lines, so that is from a generation source to a substation that travel through Santa Clara County. And of those, we have 680 miles of transmission lines and 209 miles of dis, um, transmission lines in high fire threat districts. So if you notice um, in the uh, picture here, you'll notice this area where it has some white, some yellow, and some red. And this yellow area right here is what we call tier two. And the red area is tier three, which is the extreme fire threat. What have we done for community wildfire safety in terms of our program is we've um, dramatically increased our asset inspection and repair, um, increased our enhanced vegetation management program. We've done system hardening. That is, we've put in some wire that's called tree wire, so that's actually insulated conductor wire. We've done targeted device replacement for those devices that are safer within the wildland areas. And as a condition of last resort, when we know that we're going to have both high winds, high temperatures, low relative humidities, and critically low fuel moisture, we will shut the power off to ensure that when the wind hits, the wind event hits, that those power lines are not conducting electricity, thus creating that opportunity for an ignition. We also have created what we call our Wildfire Safety Operations Center. It's part of our Hazardous Awareness uh, Warning Center. We've increased the number of weather stations because one of the beauties of being a resident in Santa Clara Valley is our beautiful weather and also the wonderful microclimates that we have. And we wanna ensure that we know what the weather is in your neighborhood so we can make appropriate risk assessment decisions based upon that. We've increased the number of high definition cameras and I'll show you a map that goes into that significantly in more detail. We probably have um, the largest meteorology department uh, besides the National Weather Service in the greater um, territory of PG&E. Because if you think about it, when it gets cold, people like to heat their homes. When it gets hot, people like to cool their homes. So everything about the weather is dependent on energy delivery. And also for risk management and risk assessment, knowing what goes on in California with wildfire risk, it's really dependent on meteorology as well. We employ satellite detection systems. This is some defense conversion technology where they can tell if there is a height heat signature on the ground and the satellites pick it up within seconds and send information to our Hazard Awareness Warning Center that lets us put particular attention uh, on those areas. So if you think about, if we have a satellite detection of a heat signature, even something as simple as a car fire, if you would, our satellites pick that up, that signal, it sends information to our warning center. We can immediately point cameras towards that and see where that is in relation um, to people and to our assets. And then we also, in terms of reducing the impact of public safety power shutoff, if you think back to 2019, how widespread those shutoffs were all the way down into the valley floor as compared to the effects of them this year, we are really surgically focusing on those high fire threat district areas where the wildfire risk is the greatest and where because of our significant greater number of weather stations, we can determine whether the winds in that location are such that it requires the power to be shut off. So what's new in 2021? In our system hardening, we've added 180 miles of hardened circuits. 
we've done uh, an additional 1,800 circuit miles of enhanced vegetation management. We've added 300 new weather stations and 135 cameras. And all of those weather stations and all of those cameras are accessible as public use on the internet. So if you have internet connection, you can look at those cameras and you can look at those weather stations and where they are in relation to where you are or even potentially somewhere where you may desire to vacation or visit or travel to or have loved ones. We've also limited the number of um, customers impacted by public safety power shutdowns by adding 275 additional sectionalizing devices. So think of your main panel at your home closest to where your power comes into your household. That's the main. And most homes then have a circuit breaker panel so that, say, your oven has some sort of fault. It only trips the circuit in that area of the household and it doesn't shut the power off in the other areas of the household. By putting in these sectionalizing devices in the neighborhoods that separate the high fire threat district from the non-high fire threat district between tier one and tier two, we can truly keep the power on through those areas that have no wildfire risk and be able to determine whether we need to shut the power off in those areas that do have high fire threat risk. The other nice thing about that as well is most of these are remote operated devices that our distribution operations can actually switch that power off in the event of a wildfire where there needs to be an evacuation so that you don't want power lines coming down or if power lines have come down, you don't want energized electrical on the ground as people are trying to get out. Yes, this does create a risk if those areas involve street lights and dependent on whether or not those street lights have battery backup to go into the flashing mode. There is um, significant work that communities are doing for wildfire and tsunami evacuation within the Bay Area both on the coastal side for the tsunami and in the high fire threat districts for the wildfires. So that's super helpful as well. We've also done a significant amount in terms of su supporting customers specifically with increasing the number of language services, understanding that the Silicon Valley is an incredibly diverse area where there's a multiplicity of languages. We've added 16 new languages to our services We've increased the number of batteries that we give to those folks who are on medical baseline that qualify for receiving battery backup. Um, this is like the Goal Zero lithium battery pack that will run a CPAP machine or an oxygen generation machine for someone if they need that um, for their medical device. We've also increased our number of um, access and functional need communities whether it's ADA compliance or um, assistance and services for folks that have difficulty accessing care or evacuating in the event of care. We've increased the number of meal replacement opportunities knowing that when we shut power off, if it goes for longer than eight hours, there's quite easily food spoilage and the ability for you to get replacement food for free through your food banks and then additional partnerships with community-based organizations as well. Here in Santa Clara County, and specifically in the Los Altos Hills area, in 2001, because of the number of fires that occurred in what we call our Tier 3 or Extreme Threat areas, all of our energy and focus has been placed in those areas that have our most extreme fire risks. So you'll notice that we only have one line mile in this area that was scheduled for line hardening. We have scheduled for and have completed the installation of 17 sectionalizing devices, thus making the areas that we do shut off power significantly smaller. And if you're not aware, Los Altos Hills, your community specifically, has one of the most robust vegetation management programs. 
people in Los Altos Hills like their trees and they like to control what happens to those trees. And so with the cooperation of the Firewise community and the Fire Safe Council and the Los Altos Hills County Fire Department, your ability to have focused and specific uh, vegetation treatment within your community is much better than just about any other place in the Bay Area. And that's something you should be proud of and something you should know that if you stop by the booth of the Los Altos Hills County Fire Department, they can talk to you about what to do to increase your survivability of your property and properly preparing it in the event of wildfire. I can tell you as a resident of South County down by Gilroy, when PG&E comes to trim the trees of the power lines around my house, um, while they are licensed arborists, uh, I wouldn't say that they are the most focused on what the beauty of my trees look like because I have redwoods and oaks and they often look like they've gotten a military haircut rather than um, something where they sculpture the tree for a sense of aesthetic beauty as well. So there's a part of me that wishes that I lived in Los Altos Hills for that sake. And I'll show you a map of where we have our weather stations and our um, uh, high definition cameras. You, you should be aware if you live in Los Altos Hills, your town council is very focused on this. And as late as 621 this morning, I received an email from one of your council members, probably because she knew that I would be coming and talking to you, her constituency, about adding a number of cameras in your areas um, so that the detection of wildfire and your ability that if you hear that there's a wildfire, if you have power and you have internet signal, like on a smartphone, you'd be able to look at those cameras to see, is that fire, is that smoke near me or near an area where I have a loved one or a way to get out? With a public safety power shutdown, safety is our most important responsibility as stated here. And as I said, dangerous conditions have to exist before we go to this um, avenue of last result of shutting off your power. Obviously, PG&E is in the business of energy delivery, and we know that shutting power off is incredibly inconvenient, and for some people who are medical baseline, can be life-threatening. So our California Public Utilities Commission ensures that there is significant warning and communication to you as both resident and or customer in terms of the information that's out there. So once severe weather is passed, we then have to inspect the entire system, both from the air and the ground. And in Los Altos Hills, you'll notice that we do fly helicopters after we've shut power off because we can cover a lot of territory in a really short period of time to reduce the amount of time that you're without power. And once we have completed our assessment and our inspections and ensured that there is no repairs necessary, that's when we restore power. So it's all about low humidity, high winds, red flag warnings, dry material on the ground, and our on the ground real time observation that we have both from our crews and from those weather stations that we've put in your neighborhood. The timing on a notification of a pu public safety power shutdown is one to two days before we believe that the conditions are going to occur based upon our meteorologist um, forecast, we'll go into what they call a watch mode, much like a tornado watch versus a tornado warning. A tornado watch would mean the conditions are lining up as though it would be indicative of that. It's the same thing from a public safety power shutoff warning. And just before the event, we'll go into the warning phase. You'll see a lot of media blitzes. If you've signed up on our website, they'll send you both texts, emails, and phone calls to let you know. If you've signed up as a medical baseline customer, they will call you, they will email you, and they will text you until you acknowledge. 
So if there's an opportunity where it says press one to acknowledge and you keep hanging up saying, I wish they'd stop calling. (laughs) We have to get to the point that if you've signed up as a medical baseline and you have it acknowledged, we will consider that you haven't gotten the message from us and we'll actually go do a door knock. And when we get to the places where we can't even reach you with a door knock, then we give that address to the sheriff's office or the law enforcement for the area so that they can make sure that you are contacted. The new thing that we've added in 2021 is let's say you have both a vacation property and a resident or you have a loved one that you watch for but you're not the customer that is billed for their service. You now can uh, sign up to get notifications for that secondary location. So again, if it's a loved one that you have, my mom's 94, she still is fully independent, living on her own driving, which is a little bit scary in Cupertino, but she's still a good driver and passes her DMV driving test. So I have her uh, signed up on my list so that I know that if her power is going to be shut off or if her power goes out, I get a phone call, a text, and an email so I can get a hold of her right away. You can also put things like your children's school or daycare or your place of business or work as well for a secondary address. Again, we talked about all of the resources that we've reached out to. Those are available on our website. If you live in a tier two or tier three area and you have a well, which some folks actually still are on in areas of really rural Los Altos Hills, know that if you're in a tier two or tier three area and you have a well, you may be eligible for a rebate for a generator if you need a generator to get well water. I don't know, has anybody in here gone on our website and looked at our Safety Action Center? If you haven't, it's really worthy of looking at. And if you have your phone, take a picture of this slide and get that URL for that website because it has an abundance of information of what you should be doing to prepare for the event of a power failure or the event of any other kind of emergency. It gives you tips on how to create an emergency plan. I have these brochures out at the table that has the PG&E tablecloth on it. Pick up one of these and it gives you um, just things to consider about an emergency plan. My sisters and I all know what our phone tree is in the event that something occurs in Cupertino where my mom lives. And my sisters and I all have connection with that as do my daughters and I. We have created this last year a video series called Seven Saturdays. They're really short video clips of things you can do over the course of seven Saturdays. It doesn't take all day. It just takes a few hours on each of those days of hardening your home for survival in wildfire. And I strongly recommend um, you taking a look at that That's also available in our Safety Action Center or in our PG&E YouTube channel. You've heard this time and again. You've got a great Fire Safe Council. You've got a great Los Altos Hills County Fire Department. This message should be old to you, but it always bears repeating that if you create defensible space around your home, its survivability in the event of a wildfire is significantly increased. I can tell you that as a firefighter in this county for 42 years, both as a firefighter and my last 15 years as a battalion chief, that when we go into a neighborhood where we have more homes than we have fire engines, after we've checked to make sure there's no search and rescue, when it comes to homes that we defend, we put as our first priority those homes that people have made defensible space around because they've indicated the effort to harden their home for survivability. And what your home looks like will really depend on how survivable your neighbor's home is. So this is one of those areas that if you're finding that even perhaps your neighbors haven't created defensible space, in a wildfire that actually affects the fire behavior around your property as well. And that's where I would strongly recommend that you contact your local fire agency 
to have a conversation about what can be done so that the entire neighborhood is safe when everybody creates defensible space. There's lots and lots of tools out there for you to be able to prepare for the event of a loss of power and specifically in the event of wildfire. And if you're not comfortable operating on the internet, make sure you stop by the booth. I'll be here for um, an hour or two this morning and then I have to go and start preparing for this incredible storm we've got coming Sunday night and Monday. We're very excited about the rain that we're gonna get, but we know that wind and rain, especially the first storm of the season, often puts limbs into power lines and your power will probably go off. And so we wanna be prepared to ensure that we have both planning that has been taking place over the last six days and the crews to help. Again, this is my um, information for contacting me. I am your representative of PG&E for public safety coordination, and I'm your agency rep in this county. I work closely with um, Dave Barnett, Denise Gluhan, and Victoria Beebe, and they are your representatives of the Los Altos Hills County Fire Department. And um, if there's anything that you need, and if you are inclined to use technology, we have a brand new app that we're rolling out. It's called the Report It app. Nothing's more frustrating than getting on your phone and trying to describe a problem of a tree limb near a power line or a bunch of grass around a power pole. And with this app, it uses the location services in the app. If you have that turned on in your phone, you take a picture, you describe the problem. It already knows where you are by geolocation. And again, this program is required to be reported on to the California Public Utilities Commission every 30 days. So it's not like they can ignore what you've sent in. Now I've downloaded it and I use it because I live right on the border of a tier two and a tier one area. And I wanted to see one, how easy is it to use? How responsive is PG&E in terms of reporting a circumstance or a situation? And um, within 24 hours, I got the reply that they had received. On one of them, they asked me for, to, would you please go back and take at least seven more pictures from multiple angles so we can get a better idea of the scope of the problem, um, so we know who to send out to solve the problem. And it had to do with tree limbs that are growing too cro close to the power lines. And I, don't, I didn't wanna wait for the storm to come for those to get up there when it's wet out and cause a short or a shortage. And so that's called PG&E Report It, one word, R-E-P-O-R-I-T. Let me see if I can find, if I've been given a slide for the reported app. The last thing I do want to talk about um, just before we end is what are the situations why the power goes out? And we can notify you in advance of several circumstances of when the power goes out. If it's a public safety power shutoff, you're gonna get a minimum of two days warning on that. If it's a rotating outage created by um, the California independent system operator who keeps grid stability in the eight Western US states, you're gonna get advanced notification on that as well. And if we're gonna do planned maintenance on a power pole or a power line in your area, the California Public Utilities Commission requires us to give you 10 days advance notice so that you can appropriately plan for that planned outage. Now the places that we can't give you advance notification is a place where there's an emergency repair, like a car running into a power pole and knocking it over. Obviously we wouldn't be aware of it until it occurs. In an active wildfire, those circumstances, once we're made aware of it, 
We can send emails and texts and phone calls, but it only where we have really increased the sensitivity of those power lines because we've had some experience where the vegetation due to climate change is so critically dry that it's not winds. And everything about public safety power shutdown has to do with critical winds. But when we have critical fire behavior weather and you live in a tier two or tier three um, fire threat district, we've increased the sensitivity on those power lines so that if they sense any kind of trouble, they will automatically shut the power off requiring us to inspect it first to ensure that there's not a limb that once in a while moves in or that a tree um, branch came down on a power line or some sort of wildlife got into the power lines and created an outage as well. Know that we only use those during declared fire season of CAL FIRE and the US Forest Service. So with this upcoming rain, all of those circuits are gonna be dialed back to their regular sensitivity. So the reliability of your electricity will go back to where it was and you should be able to expect um, having your power on at all times. That's the end of my presentation. I'm open to any questions if it has to do with PG&E and wildfire safety. We want to have the vegetation of that tree six feet away from the location of your home. Uh -huh. So let's say the tree has grown taller and the lower branches would have been within six feet. We recommend trimming up those ladder fuels away from your house. But if the taller limbs are further than six feet away from your structure, they're fine. What I have found from 42 years of fighting wildfire, and as you know, I'm a Santa Clara Valley native, but I fought wildfires 25 years in the city of San Jose and 17 years with Cal Fire, is it's not a flame front that comes and takes over a house like a tsunami. It's the ember cast. It's all the burning embers that land in places where there is flammable vegetation that can catch on fire. So if you watch the CZU complex, I'll get right to you. There were a lot of little tiny fires that landed around people's home, but because they didn't do clearance and there wasn't enough fire resources, because at that time there was over 2,000 fires burning in California when the CZU fire, and that fire itself was like 17 different lightning strikes that started at one time from San Mateo County all the way down to Santa Cruz County. Um, because of those people didn't have defensible space, that's often why their homes burned down.